The Romance of the Rancho. Azusa, 1851. Giant lottery to give away town. Azusa, 1862. Gold town wiped out by flood. Azusa, 1870. Squatters break dam and fight for water. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos a weekly dramatization of the colorful history behind the Southern California of today. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to tell the fascinating events which took place on some particular section of the Southland. Your purchases of defense bonds and stamps help to defend America today. But don't forget that they are also a sound business proposition for you. A systematic and continuous defense bond savings program now will mean substantial resources for you and your family in the future. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles strongly urges that you look on your defense bond investment program in the light of both patriotism and sensible business practice. And like any such plan, it should be put into effect immediately and followed systematically. Visit your post office, bank, title insurance company in your county, or other source tomorrow, and invest in America. Now here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to tell us the story. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Tonight, our story takes us to the section of Southern California around Azusa in the San Gabriel Canyon, a land with a colorful background, which was once owned by one of the most interesting characters of California history, Henry Dalton. It's a story rich in the romance of the ranchos. Any story of Azusa must necessarily start with the name Azusa. It's an unusual name, evidently Indian in origin. It puzzled folks for a long time about its meaning, where it had come from, and so on. The legends and stories which have grown up around the name are numerous, and range from the humorous, such as that it means from A to Z in the USA, to the sublime, such as the beautiful legend told by an old Indian woman in the early days of the settlement. It seems that many moons before, a beautiful young Indian maiden journeyed with her father to the village of a nearby tribe. When they arrived, they found the villagers upset. My father, why do these people mourn? Why is there wailing and chanting? Are they not happy? No, my child, for their chief lies near death in the hut. Near death? Cannot their medicine men cure him? No, they have tried, failed. The chief will soon be taken by great spirit. My father, take me to him. You, my child... What could you do? I cannot say. I, I do not know, but I feel that I must see him and place my hands upon his head. My child, you cannot do that. I can. I must. Father, take me to him, for I know that I can cure him. Into the hut of the sick chief, the young girl was taken. She kneeled beside the unconscious man, gently placed her hands upon his fevered brow. Oh, make well this man, great sir. Take away the evil demons which torment him. Make him whole again. My daughter, the chief stirs. His eyes open. He rises up. You have cured him. I do not know how, my father. But I thank the great spirit for giving me the power. Very soon the chief was well again. And in gratitude, he made the lovely young girl the bride of his handsome son, the future chief. As they stood in the ceremonial ring before the council, her father spoke. My child, I give you new name, bestowed on you in gratitude by chief whose life you saved. I name you Azusa, 
blessed miracle. And legend has it that from the lovely young maiden with the miraculous healing powers, Azusa and the valley around it received its name. Aside from the legends which recede back into the misty depths of time, there is little recorded history of this area until about the year 1841, when a 4,430-acre tract for a rancho was granted by the Mexican governor to Don Luis Arenas, former alcalde of Los Angeles. He erected a small adobe house on the hill near the present site of the high school. And then, two years later, a young man arrived in the port of San Pedro who was to make most of the history of Azusa. To the custom officials, he was... Henry Dalton, merchant born in England, in business in Peru, coming here to look over the country. Henry Dalton came, saw, and was conquered. He brought his business to Los Angeles. Soon he was in the market for a rancho. Hearing about the rancho Azusa, he went to Don Luis Serena. See, si, I would be willing to sell it. I, I do not care much for rancho life. Good. Then we can get down to business. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, senor. For even though I would like to sell it, I cannot. You cannot? Why not? The government, you know. It is all mixed up. There is trouble with Michel Terrena. Oh, it's all so unsettled that they have issued an order forbidding the sale of any land. You mean they won't let you sell your land whether you want to or not? See, that is it. I could sell, but it would not be legal. I need the money, too. But isn't there something we can do? No, I am sorry, senor. Even the government cannot do anything. <laughs> You would think they would let me raise some money any way I could. I owe them money. Hmm. Owe them money? See, si, a thousand pesos, and they need it. They are supposed to raise an army for Michel Terena. Then they have no money. Wait a minute. How do you know this? They came just yesterday and asked me if I could pay. And you said you could not? See, si, not a peso. You didn't say anything about selling your land? No. What good would he do? Maybe a lot. Come on. We are going to the prefect right now and see about this. Uh, what are you talking about, senor? If you owe the money and they need it, and you can raise it by only by selling the land, don't worry. They'll find some way to let you sell the land. Come on, senor. You have just sold a rancho. And the sale was made. As Dalton had surmised, the governor was only too glad to arrange matters legally. Now Henry Dalton, or Don Enrique, as he was called by the Californians, took up life on Rancho Azusa, rebuilding the old Arenas Adobe and building many new structures. Crops were planted, the land was stocked with cattle. The astute English businessman soon had a thriving domain, where shortly before had been wasteland. But Dalton was smart enough not to put all his eggs in one basket. He kept up his crops prosperous mercantile business in the Pueblo. And then, one day in 1846, came news that Mexico was at war with the United States. For the next few months, life in Los Angeles was unsettled, with first the Californians, then the Americans in charge. Both of them brought trouble to the neutral Englishman. It was toward the end of hostilities that the situation became acute. Mr. Dalton, Mr. Dalton, sir. Yes, Ben, what is it? It's the soldiers again. They came this morning and took two wagon loads of our merchandise. Good heaven. And they said they'd be back for more this afternoon. Mr. Dalton, sir, we're almost out of stock and no more to be had. If they take much more, we'll have to close up shop. I know. I've just been figuring up how much they've taken so far. It comes to almost $65,000 worth. Holy mackerel. Well, that's enough to ruin any business. They'll never pay us for that much. I'm afraid you might be right, although I'm filing claims with both governments to try to collect. But if I can't, I'm ruined then. Well, what... What'll I tell them when they come back this afternoon? Tell them? <laughs> I guess there's not much you can tell them, Ben. Just let them have what they want and... May the good Lord help us. Thus started the avalanche of worries that beset the rancher. The American victory and the gold rush combined to start a flood of American settlers pouring into Southern California. Some of them settled on the rancho Azusa, renting the land from Dalton. But the United States Land Commission demanded proof of title to the land from all the rancheros. And when the government surveyors mapped out Dalton's holdings, the Englishman's domain began to crumble. Hi there, mister. Can I get a drink of water? Huh? Oh, <laughs> howdy, stranger. Sure. There's a bucket of cool spring water right there. Help yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, I ain't never seen you around here, have I? Well, that's right refreshing. No, you ain't. I'm surveying this land for the United States government. Oh, that's so? Well, my name's Casey. Glad to know you. Nice place you have here. We like it. Own it, do you? 
No, I rent it from Henry Dalton. You rent it from Henry Dalton? Now, what for? It isn't his. Well, of course it's his. It's always been here, stranger. Not now. This is public land. If you're smart, you'll file your claim for it right away. Well, come in, Casey. Glad to see you. Mr. Dalton, I... I come up to see you because... Well, I was talking to that surveyor fellow. And... Oh, yes, I've seen them around from the government, aren't they? Yes, and... Well, he... I don't know exactly how to say this, but he said that you don't own my land. He did? Yes, and I told him he was wrong, but he says their survey shows that my land's public land. Yes, I've seen their maps. They're wrong, Casey. I know. I think so, too, but what am I to do? He told me I'd better file claim for my land. Yes, I guess you'd better before someone else does. Well, Mr. Dalton, I don't feel right about that. After all, you've been pretty square with me. Oh, you needn't feel badly, Casey. I understand. It's all you can do. I'm going to fight this decision, son, if I have to take it to the Supreme Court. I have to, because it's not just your piece of land they're taking, it's a lot more, too. But if I lose the fight, I'd rather see you get it than somebody else. And if I win, well, you haven't lost anything. Well, I, I'm sorry it had to happen this way, Mr. Dalton. So am I, son. It'll just about ruin me. But it isn't your fault. Mr. Dalton, would... Would you shake hands? Sure, son, sure. God bless you. On top of the unsettled war claims, the government refused to confirm Don Enrique's claim to the best portions of his land. He fought it out in the courts for years, and that took money, lots of it. Debt began to haunt him, and he had to find ways of raising money. And so, as far back as 1851, he'd conceived the plan. See, here it is, Ben, all mapped out. Man alive. A real town on paper. Yep, the city of Benton, right here on my land. Well, what I have left, that is. You're aiming to sell lots, is that it? No, I'm going to give them away. Mr. Dalton, give them away? Yeah, I'm getting up a lottery, selling chances on these lots. Huh. People take a chance on a gamble where they wouldn't buy a barren piece of land. You know, most people can't visualize what a piece of land will look like once it's cultivated. You have to make it attractive to them some way. Maybe this is it. Why, sure, it's a marvelous idea. Why, you sell a million chances. You make plenty of money. I hope so, Ben. I have to. Mr. Dalton, what are you doing? That paper you're tearing up, that, that's the map of Benton. No, Ben, it's the map of no place. There is no Benton. There never will be any. You mean you've given it up? <laughs> given it up? There was nothing to give up. People just weren't interested, that's all. I guess we'll have to figure some other way. Oh, I... I'm sorry, Mr. Dalton. Yeah, so am I. She was a nice little town, wasn't she? I could almost see her down there at the foot of the hill. This would make a fine place to live, Ben. Someday people are going to realize that. I hope I live to see it. But now, unborn town of Benton, I hereby consign you to the dust of history. Into the fire, Ben. Throw it in. <laughs> Land is one of the most basic of all commodities. And when the market for land and real estate in any area is good, it means that general business conditions there must also be favorable. So it's encouraging to learn that California's leading authorities are predicting a substantial real estate market in Southern California during the next few years in spite of war conditions. In a statewide survey made by the California Real Estate Association since the beginning of the war last month, Interesting figures on real estate activity as compared with that of a year ago were revealed. 59% of the real estate leaders reported that local markets were improved. 77% reported a better market for older homes. 75% reported fewer rental vacancies. 58% reported more purchases of real estate for income purposes. And 69% said realty selling prices were higher. And so... Although war conditions are having an adverse effect in some fields of endeavor, the capital outlay being made to meet new housing needs is extremely reassuring. The survey indicates that Southern California will continue to be a white spot in the nation, both as a place to earn a living and as a place to enjoy living. Dalton's dreams of the town of Benton 
nestled under the hill where Azusa now stands, is not to be. And the financial ruin which hung over him was to continue for years more, constantly growing. But for a while at least, life went on much the same as before on that part of the Rancho Azusa, which Dalton still held undisputed. It was a thriving community unto itself. In July of 1847, the Englishman had been baptized into the Roman Catholic faith in order to marry Maria Guadalupe Zamorano, a daughter of one of the old families of Southern California. Dalton experimented with many new crops, but he took his greatest pride in his vineyards, where he grew many different varieties of grapes, all used to make wines and brandies in his great winery. Wine was the chief industry, and it was also the constant source of trouble, not only for Dalton, but for all the early rancheros. For most of the labor was performed by the Indians, and every week when Sunday came, the red men trooped up to be paid for their week's work. All right, men, step right up here. Form in line. We all ready, Mr. Dalton? Yes, but they won't do any good, but let's try them anyway. All right. All right, there, you. Cedro, step up here. Oh, uh, all right. Six days' work. Here you are. Oh, oh, money. Me no want money. Take back. Now, wait a minute, Cedro. You work for it, you're going to get it. No, no want money. Want the guardiente. But, men, you need the money. You can buy things with it, but buy brandy if you want, but it's bad for you. You'll be much better off if you take the money. No, me want the guardiente. No, no money. No. Yeah, there you are, Mr. Dalton. What are you going to do? Listen, you men. I can't pay you in a guardiente. It's against the law. And furthermore, I don't want to. It isn't good for you. Now listen. No, no, pay in the guardiente. Everybody does. I don't care what everybody does. You'll all get drunk and you'll be no good for three or four days. I'm going to put a stop to it. From now on, you get no brandy. Understand? No aguardiente. Oh, no aguardiente, no work. What? You mean if I don't give you the brandy, you won't show up for work tomorrow? Oh, no aguardiente. No work for you no more. What? Well, there you are, Mr. Dalton. That's the way it is. There ain't nothing we can do about it, I guess. Yeah, the stupid idiots. Can't they see we're only trying to help them? No, and I guess there ain't much use trying to make them see it. They like their fire water too well. I'd like to wring the neck of the hombre who first gave an Indian a taste of the stuff. <laughs> yes, but he ain't around, I guess, so... What do I do? Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Blast it. Give it to them. we got to have hands to do the work when they get over their spree. Go ahead. I wash my hands of them. All right. All right, you obstinate critters. Come on, ruin yourselves. But don't blame us. <laughs> The Indian's taste for fire water was a big problem. But the rancheros had other pressing problems, too, one of which struck with full force on Henry Dalton and the Rancho Azusa. In the semi-arid land of Southern California, water was more valuable than gold. And as more settlers came upon the lands and founded towns, built farms and homes, the struggle to hold the limited sources of the precious water began. Early, Henry Dalton had built diversion dams and irrigation ditches to bring the water of the San Gabriel to his land, and that of his Azusa neighbors. But now, settlements had grown up further down the river, and friction started. Now listen, Dalton, we need water. You're going to get it. I understand that, sir, but don't forget we need water, too. We're only taking as much as we need now. The rest of the river is yours. Well, it's not enough. We're going to get more. I've already suggested that we form a committee of three, with representatives of both sides to decide the distribution to each of us. I'm perfectly agreeable to abide by their decision. Blast your committee. We've already decided how much we need, and we're going to have it now. You have to open up those gates and let more water through. Man, you're asking me to drain off the lifeblood of my land and the land of all the people in this city. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Oh, you are? Well, listen here, young man. I'm not going to let my crops dry up and die. No. Nor the crops of my neighbors until you agree to the arbitration committee. And until they say otherwise, we'll keep right on taking as much water as we need. Is that so? Yes, that's so. There's enough for all of us, so I have a right to my share. Yeah? Well, you listen. You don't open up them gates, we'll open them for you. You won't touch those gates. You've no right. Never mind the right. You try to stop us. All right, then. If you want to fight, you've got it, son. Come ahead. Try it. Mr. Dalton, look over there by the diversion ditch. Yeah, it looks like a couple of men. Yeah, it sure does. That's funny. Did you send any of the men over there to repair the ditch? No, I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Well, it looks like they're working anyway. I'll stroll over that way while you finish loading the wagon. All right. I'll be ready in just a minute. Say, what are you men doing? Oh, it's you, Dalton. Now, what does it look like we're doing? Here, you can't do that. 
You're opening the gates. You're letting the water flow. That's right. I told you if you didn't open them, we would. Here, stop there. Get away from those gates. Oh, no, you don't. Put on that walking stick. Go ahead, Charlie. Don't pay no attention to him. Open them up. You can't do this. I'll have the law on you. We'll worry about that after we get the law. Here, you stop it. Stop it, I say. Oh, wait a minute, Dalton. Get back there. I'd advise you not to interfere. Take your hands off me, you rascal. Here, stop it. Don't get rough, Dalton. Stop it. Look out. How do you like it down there? Here, hell the out, you blasted oh, fool. You can stay down there till we get through. Stand back, Dalton. Wait till I get my hands on you. I don't think you will. Stand back. Oh, so you'd pull a gun on me. And it's loaded, too. Just stay where you are to a finish. And you stay where you are, brother. What? Drop that gun and put up your hands. Oh, thank goodness. Good old Ben. Here, help me out of this ditch before I drown. All right. And you boys better get going out of sight quick. And don't ever let me catch you near these gates again or you'll find out I can use this gun, too. <laughs> In spite of Dalton's efforts to form an arbitration committee, the fight over the water rights to the San Gabriel continued for years, sometimes coming to violence. It was not finally settled until 1889 with the appointment of the Committee of Nine. In the meantime, another event had brought more settlers streaming into the region of Azusa. For gold had been discovered in San Gabriel Canyon and miners flocked there. The San Gabriel classes were rich and in the years from 1858 to 1863, the average miner's return from mining in the San Gabriel was greater than the average in the gold rush towns of the north. Towns sprang up in the canyon, including El Doradoville, Downeyville, real booming gold towns. But on Saturday, January 18, 1862... Man, alive, Joe. Look at that water. I've never seen a flood like this, even up here. I'm sure glad we climbed up here on the mountain. Yeah, town's sure going to get wet today. Here. Hey, do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, sounds like an earthquake almost. Wonder what it is. No, no. Hey, look at that. Look up the canyon. Holy mackerel, man. It's a solid wall of water. Good Lord. It'll wipe the town right off the face of the map. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. Wiped off the face of the map were the mining towns of San Gabriel Canyon. But the hardy miners came back to take many millions in gold dust from the workings in the years that followed. Among them were many a canyon character who lives in the tales of the old timers today. There was Bates Persinger, the strongest man alive, who was said to have thought nothing of carrying a bale of hay on his shoulder for 15 miles up into the canyon without shifting the weight once. There was John Knox Portwood, the bad man with notches on his gun. Bill Potter, known far and wide for his tall stories. There was stuttering McNabb, and the mysterious Indian who had a fabulously rich gold mine hidden in the mountains. These and many others made the tales of canyon lore a fascinating study. But down at the mouth of the canyon, history was being made too. Dalton, desperate in need for relief from his troubles, tried a second time to establish a town on his land. In 1878, the plot of Mound City was drawn up, and the venture was to be financed through a newly formed company, the Mound City Land and Water Company. But it was only a short time before... No. No use, Ben. You mean Mound City's gone just like Benton? Worse, because now the bank's got part of it, and the land ain't mine anymore. Everything would have been all right if only we could have sold a few farms and made the payments. You mean they couldn't sell nothing? Oh, there's a few buildings, just the start of a town, but not enough to do any good. No, Ben, something had better happen pretty quick, or I'm finished. Maybe the government in Washington will give you back that land that all the squatters took. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. But I've been waiting almost 30 years for that. And they haven't made a decision yet. I don't suppose they ever will. Sure they will. When they do, you'll be saved. Mr. Dalton. Oh, Henry. Yes, Ben. I got news from Washington. From Washington? Ben. Oh, I can tell by your face, old friend. They decided... Against you, sir. No, Mr. Slawson, it's no good. I've tried to start a town here twice and failed. Last time, I even lost the land to the bank you represent. All I have left is my little homestead. I guess I'm licked. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Maybe we can make this thing pay after all. I want to try it. Build a town. Won't work. People just don't want to live out here, I guess. Ah, uh, you're wrong. Things are different now. There's a railroad coming through here and another farther down. There's going to be a land boom around this valley. 
I think this time a town will succeed. I doubt it. Anyway, I'm sick of it. I'm through trying. Well, I'm not. I'm so sure of this, I'm going to take this land over from the bank myself and start the town of Azusa. And Jonathan Sayers Slauson was right. He founded the town of Azusa just in time to catch the great boom of the 80s when 36 new towns sprang up between there and Los Angeles with fares as low as $1 for the train trip from the Missouri River west to California, settlers flocked to the valleys of Southern California, and almost overnight, the town of Azusa grew into a thriving community. Around it grew Glendora, Duarte, Irwindale, Covina. A great citrus industry has grown up on the land which Henry Dalton first saw to be a fine place to live. Today, in the beautiful little city of Azusa, over 5,200 people look forward to an even greater future. Such is the story of progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. Frank Graham will be back in just a moment. As you probably know, the 1940 census established the population of Los Angeles County at slightly more than 2,785,000. The population of Greater New York, according to the same authority, is 7,455,000. And yet, during the month of last November, the number of deeds and mortgages recorded in Los Angeles County was almost twice the total recorded in Greater New York. The actual figures were 19,699 for Los Angeles County, 10,984 for Greater New York. Such figures graphically illustrate the leadership of Southern California in volume of real estate transactions. They also reveal the importance of the service of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, which facilitates real estate transactions by verifying and insuring land titles promptly and at a minimum cost to owners and investors. Next week, we're going to tell you the story of one of the first Americans to cross the mountains into Southern California, a real pathfinder. Jedediah Smith was a fur trapper looking for new fields to conquer, and he helped to open up this country for Americans. Be sure to hear his story. Until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.